Welcome to another edition of That Time When. Matt Miller with you at Trekzone HQ. This is the podcast where we take you through the Trekzone archive, flipping through over 550 episodes over eight years here on the show, bringing some great content from those years gone by. On this edition, That Time When, Melinda Snodgrass beamed in for a chat last year as Bruce Maddox was making headlines on Star Trek Picard. Taking you back through the library of Trek Zone in a bite sized podcast. That time when. Well, Melinda, welcome to Trek Zone. Thank you very much, Matthew, for inviting me. I'm really excited to be part of this. It is a great thrill to uh, to have you on the show. And as I said in the intro there as well, uh, the roots of a Trek Zone conversation is interviewing every sci-fi alumni in the world. So it is great that you're here with us uh, to, to chat about uh, your writing uh, across, across the years. Well, I've been doing it for a long time after I decided I, I did not want to be a lawyer anymore. I got, I got much better. I'm a, I'm a reformed lawyer now. But, uh, and, and I had dear friends who were writers, and they encouraged me to try, and I did. And it's been a career that has been so incredibly rewarding for me. I, I'm very grateful to them for all the support over the years. Well, some of your writing credits uh, include creating a couple of series of books. There's Edge, Imperials, and Circuit. All different sets of stories with a few years between them. Uh, what inspired you to create them? A lot of these series come out of my my education, actually. Um, the circuit books are about a federal court judge writing circuit in outer space, because I was trained as an attorney. Um, and I also have another series that I had written under pseudonym, which we're bringing back out now under my own name, about a young woman lawyer working in a vampire law firm in Manhattan um, that draws a lot on, on some of my experiences. And even Imperials, which is a space opera, um, I'm much more interested in how societies in crisis function and deal with these problems of class differences and growing inequality. Um, so it's less about about spaceships shooting each other and, and more about marginalized people and humans as the evil invading aliens instead of the other way around. And then the Edge books were my reaction to the fact that we're in the 21st century and there are still people who put more credence in crystal power and guardian angels and getting their auras balanced than they do in science and medicine and and just rationality. Um, so the Edge books are about the war between science and rationality and superstition, religion, and magic. And I come down on the side of rationality. And in some ways, that also ties back into the law because... Um, you know, without without law, civilization is not possible. One thing I love is that you said you were a lawyer uh, and you've written some books about lawyers uh, in sci-fi settings. Does it help bring a sense of realism uh, to write about stuff that you know? You know, I think it helps. I don't think it's required. I think, I think teachers who tell students that you can only write what you know, well, none of us have met aliens, so those of us who are writing science fiction are not going to be able to, you know, write from our experience. But I do think that anything you studied and learned can can add to what you bring to your writing and, and enriches it and deepens it. When I lecture, I do a lot of guest lectures at, at universities and even some high schools, I always urge the students to, you know, stay in school. I sound like a little, you know, the, the principal and giving a little lecture. I'm serious about this because nothing that you learn is ever wasted as a writer. Um, even to the point of sitting in a coffee shop. I mean, we're terrible eavesdroppers. We'll sit and overhear conversations because, and you never know when that's going to end up in somebody's book. And we just hope that person we eavesdropped on is, is not going to recognize themselves. We try to be careful. But we really are students of the world, you know, as writers, uh, you know, just pulling it all in and this sort of amorphous way of saying, give me everything so that I can pour it back out on a page. Well, you wrote some stories for Sequest DSV, The Outer Limits, of course, Star Trek, uh, and many more, uh, a, a credits list across many genres. 
What's your favorite to write for? You know, whatever it is I'm doing in the moment, I fall in love with it, which I think is good. Um, it's awful to write something that you're not passionate about. I mean, obviously, I think my first love is science fiction. Um, my dad would read aloud to me when I was a little girl before he taught me to read. And the book he read to me was 20,000 Leagues of the Sea. And then the very first novel I read sort of all by myself as a child was a Edgar Rice Burroughs' A Princess of Mars. And so I think that ultimately science fiction is always going to have my heart. Um, I mean, the idea of exploring the universe and seeing distant planets and hopefully meeting, you know, new new races of people is just always fired my imagination. Uh, and, you know, on balance, I, I read both. I enjoy both fantasy and science fiction. But my heart is with science fiction because I, I want to reach for the future, I guess. Are you watching us on YouTube? Click the link in the description to catch this interview in full now. Maybe you're listening to us on your favorite podcast app. Then beam over to our official watch page and click the link there.